Hi world, it's the 3rd of May 2024, although I'm not quite sure when I'm going to publish this video. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon UK time. I want to look at the horoscope of the US of A. I realise the immensity of this task and I do not do it lightly. Just by saying I'm doing the horoscope of the US of A, I'm sure the trolls are already sharpening their pens. For this video, the horoscope I'm using for the US of A is the Sibley chart, 4th of July 1776, Philadelphia, somewhere around 5, 5.15 p.m., giving a 12 degree Gemini, a 12 degree Sagittarius Gemini ascendant. And for anyone who says, oh, but that's not the chart of America, it's such and such a chart, I go, well, wait a minute. If you need proof that the Sibley chart worked, go back to 9-11. At 9-11, which was one of the most defining moments in American history, Saturn was at 13 degrees of Gemini and Pluto was at 13 degrees of Sagittarius. The Saturn-Pluto opposition was very strong at this time and it was on the ascendant and descendant of the Sibley chart. That in itself tells me that this is a correct horoscope. I'm looking at the charts of America, not so much in terms of analysis of the American psyche, because I value my personal life too much. But I am looking at the events that's coming up in the next six months. I'm indebted to an astrological colleague, Christopher Benton, who's got his own YouTube channel, He's not just an astrologer, he's, a, he's an academic with a multifaceted skill set, but he is a good American astrologer and I'm very grateful for his communication and the things that he's pointed out to me, which have sort of put the icing on the cake to what I already knew. So here's just a little bit of information that's going to set the scene for this. The Republican National Convention will start on the 15th of July, 2024. And this is the day that Mars and Uranus are conjunct with each other in Taurus. Straight away, there's going to be fireworks there. But that's not all. On the 19th of August is the opening day of the Democratic Convention, but the 19th of August is extremely close to what I see as the most difficult full moon of the year. There's a full moon, I think, it's on the, I think it is on the 19th, might be the 18th, um, August full moon. Indeed, it is the 19th. The sun will be at 27 Aquarius, uh, sorry, Leo, the moon will be at 27 Aquarius, where it was in the Sibley chart. Uranus will be at 26 degrees of Taurus. So the sun opposite moon will be square Uranus. So the Republicans are meeting with a Mars-Uranus conjunction. The Democrats are meeting with the sun and the moon, exactly square Uranus. Both of these are going to bring fireworks and a great deal of unpredictability into the circumstances of those meetings. To add insult to injury, the election in early November is within a day of the exact opposition of Mars to Pluto. Mars will be at something like zero degrees of Leo, Pluto will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So again, this is an explosive combination with an element of subversiveness. Things are not going to go according to plan. This is not going to be a normal election. Mars conjunct Uranus on the day the Republicans meet suggests that there's going to be fireworks, a lot of unpredictable changes, that, um, there's, there's a lot of drama going to be happening at that time. Sun opposite Moon, both square Uranus on the Democratic Convention suggests to me that again there's a lot of unpredictability, lots of sudden changes in a way that's going to yank the apple, upset the apple cart and yank the carpet from underneath the feet. And then with Mars opposite Pluto on the day of the election to within one degree, 
it suggests to me there are likely to be some type of events which attempt to derail the election. There's an element of subversiveness behind the scenes, underhand behaviour with Mars opposite Pluto, and it can get downright nasty in a worst case scenario. So let's look at, <laughs> let's look at the candidates. There are two. Donald Trump, 14th of June, 1946, 10.54am in New York. He currently has Uranus in the sky about to land on his midheaven. Now he's the Teflon Don. You know, he's Teflon coated. Somehow he manages to get away with everything. Love him or hate him, he's a controversial figure who in many ways is either the saviour of America draining the swamp or summarising everything that's wrong with America because of his attitude towards women, uh, his looseness with money and a number of people consider him to be feeling that he's above the law. With Uranus on his midheaven from now through to the early part of next year, there is a great deal of unpredictability. The midheaven deals not only with job, work, career goals and ambition and the way you market, promote, advertise, sell, project yourself. It also deals with people and institutions in positions of responsibility and authority, such as father, teacher, God, employer, the law, the sheriff, the state, the judges. So Uranus on his midheaven, which, and also squaring his Mars at the same time, because Trump has Mars on the ascendant in Leo, square his midheaven, it suggests to me that um, if he comes across as too pompous or arrogant, he's going to upset so many people in positions of responsibility and authority that the idea of him, um, he will alienate so many people from the establishment, which in some people's eyes is a good thing, but it will, there'll be a very strong attempt to derail him. There's a number of other factors with Trump, particularly around his moon in Gemini. Um, I'm trying to think where I saw it. Can't remember. But then Biden's got no, Biden hasn't got anything to shout about either. I mean, Joe Biden, born on the 20th of November, 1942, just a couple of years before Donald Trump. They're both old. Biden has just survived the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction opposite his Mercury, but now Uranus in the sky over the next year and a half to two years is going to be opposite his sun. More significantly, Pluto is in year two of a two-year transit squaring his moon. His moon is in his fifth house, which deals with children, and Biden's weak point is definitely the antics of his son. This is the way that a lot of people in America are attacking him because his son appears to be, on the surface, allegedly involved in a number of malfeasance practices, malfeasant practices. Pluto will not finish square to Biden's moon until the end of the year. So it may well be that the antics of his son could easily derail him. I'm on record both individually and with other astrologers as saying, well, look, there's a distinct possibility here that neither of these two people will end up running. Now, I realise the implausibility of that statement. Trump is by far and away the most popular Republican candidate amongst the majority of the hardcore Republican electorate. Biden is the preferred candidate for the Democratic electorate. So here am I as an astrologer going, yeah, but the astrology suggests that neither of them are going to contest the election and the election is only six weeks away. Uh, six months away, I'm sorry. So I'm thinking, okay, hmm, well, a lot can happen in six months, but it would have to be a hell of a lot for both of them to not contest the election. 
So on the one hand, I side with the astrology and I say, yes, neither of them will contest the election. But I do add a caveat. If both of them or either of them contest the election and win, neither of them will serve a full term. Trump will be beset with financial difficulties because no, regardless of whether all of his court cases find him guilty or not guilty, it's bleeding him dry financially and people will only stump up just so much cash. Let alone by the trainers. Biden, he, he seems... old and I don't just mean in terms of years he may be a very astute operator but neither of these people have the cut and thrust that's needed when I come back to the horoscope of America America is in such a state of dichotomy it is fragmenting at the seams the divide between left and right, between red and blue, is so extreme now that there is no way back. Even if a middle figure, such as Oprah Winfrey or RFK Jr., were, were to take some position of responsibility, they'd only act as a kind of temporary short-term bridge. I feel that America is fragmenting. However... Later this year, around the time of the election, Jupiter in the sky will stand still on top of America's Mars and opposite Trump's moon. So there's going to be a lot of overinflated developments around the time of the election. So here's my forecast. It's not so much based on the two individuals. With Mars conjunct Uranus in Taurus at the time of the Republican convention, that is not going to go according to plan. With that full moon square Uranus at the time of the Democratic convention, that is going to bring some really unexpected and unpredictable big changes suddenly out of the blue. And with Mars opposite Pluto at the time of the election, it is a dangerous time. And I suspect there will be subversive antics going on to try and derail the election if it appears to be not going the way that certain vested interest groups want it to go. I'm going to suggest that the election may have to be delayed by a week or two. America, my friends, you live in interesting times. I send you my love, my best wishes. And um, at the end of the day, the universe provides. But from an external perspective, and particularly from an astrological perspective, it's fascinating to watch. And I look forward to some type of outcome before the end of this year. Catch you later and good luck to all of you. Bye now.